Sanchez. I'm with a company called Tractor Tip, and what we have for sale today is uh, JCB 426E. Um, we're going to talk about the uh, mechanics of this machine in the first clip, the operating specs in the second, and then we'll run it in the third. Um, if you buy this machine for, from me, or any of the other machines that I have for sale, you're gonna be dealing with Perf Provencio. He's the guy running the camera right now. He's my right hand man. Uh, price on a new machine like this these days is, I hadn't priced them in so long, but I'd imagine they're probably 150 to 200,000, somewhere in there, depending on how you have it equipped. This machine has everything on it, so. Uh, this machine currently has about 6,800 hours on it. It weighs about 28,330 pounds. The widest point is this bucket right here at eight foot four inches. Now if you take this bucket off, this has got a quick coupler on it. The widest point on that machine by itself without the bucket is eight feet. It's eight feet on the machine. Highest point is the top of that cab at 11 feet. The transportation link from the front of this cutting edge right here to the ass end of that counterweight is 22 and a half feet. This machine is comparable to like a uh, John Deere 544H or maybe a Cat 930G uh, case 621. It's a little bigger than a Komatsu WA250, but it's smaller than a 320, so it's right in between there. As far as the history of this unit goes, this machine, like almost every machine we purchase, is an original owner Dallas, Texas machine. I say that because it is essentially a rust-free machine. Um, you can see where the rainwater's kind of gotten to some places where the paint's flecked off, but it in no way, shape, or form is rust pervasive. We're 300 miles from the ocean and we're far enough south that the only salt we see, you know, we don't salt roads or anything. The only salt we see is the salt on our kitchen tables and Perf and I try to avoid that. So it's a, it's a rust free machine. Just about every machine I purchase comes from one of about 30 different large manufacturers or municipalities that we deal with here in the here in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Uh, we deal with some dealers as well. They send us their trade-ins when somebody buys a new machine. So um, we know the people that we buy from. This particular machine came from a company that we've done literally millions and millions of dollars of business with over the years, back and forth. I bought stuff from them, they bought stuff from us. Um, the, uh, this particular company has an excellent maintenance program. I mean, it rivals some of the best I've seen. Uh, they take really good care of their machines and we've been happy with all the machines that we purchased from these guys. And it should be said that before I purchase any machine, I have two mechanics go out and inspect the machine. If they come back and they say, Uncle Rick, everything's okay with the machine. Then I send Perf Provencio out to go look at the machine. And if he comes back and says, hey, Uncle Rick, everything's okay with the machine, then I personally go out and I inspect the machine before I write a check. So these machines are three and four times vetted. Um, as far as options go, you can see you got remote test ports right there. Make it pretty easy to diagnose. You've got a quick coupler right here. We got a set of forks over there. Um, 
I'll, I'll include a uh, video. The, these these forks right here are for a smaller machine. That 70Z, it's probably about the same size, but it's got a different fork arrangement set up. So I'll, I'm gonna include a video about uh, these Pemberton or JRB forks. Pemberton and JRB are the same thing. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in a later video. I'll include it at the end of the video. But it's pretty, it'd be pretty educational for folks. Uh, this machine has auxiliary hydraulics. So you could run like a broom or, you know, different attachments on it. Again, it's got a quick coupler and forks. I think I already said that. It's inherent. Most four wheel, well, wheel loaders are four wheel drive machines. This machine is no exception. It's four wheel drive. Um, does this one have a key battery disconnect? I don't uh, think so. No. It doesn't. Um, it's got a. Uh, it's got an outlet in the cap <laughs> there, like a cigarette lighter outlet. I'm not sure if that's 12 or 24 volts. I'll try to figure that out when we before we post this uh, listing. So you may not want to um, plug your phone in there. Um, it's got a hydraulic fan back there. That uh, that hydraulic fan that's handy to have because. Uh, As you can see, you can pull everything away from the, uh, you can get to your radiators and clean them out pretty easy. That's the benefit of a, of a hydraulic fan. You can get to all these, uh, so you can swing this away. This opens up somehow. Well, it, it opens, there's a hinge. You can get to all four corners of that, that machine with those coolers. Uh, it's got a remote transmission control at the stick up there, at the joystick. It is an enclosed cab machine. It's got all the windows on it. The AC blows cold or cool, but not, not super cold. So it probably just needs to be recharged. If we get a chance, we'll recharge it. Um, this machine's got parallel lift capabilities works like if you're unloading and unloading it doesn't have a natural roll like with the regular z-bar linkage um, as far as this engine goes That's a Cummins BTAA 5.9C engine. It's got a gross horsepower of 152, net horsepower of 150. This uh, machine's got a 61 gallon uh, tank, which will run you anywhere from 15 to 20 hours of operation, depending on uh, your application. All of the fluid levels on this machine are where they should be. There's no, absolutely no leaks on it whatsoever. Everything on it works. Transmission's got plenty of power. It'll shift through all the gears. It's a power shift transmission. It'll shift through all the gears without hesitation. The brakes stop it on a dime. <clears throat> Top speed in forward is 24 miles an hour. In reverse, it's 15. As you can see, these tires are pretty even across the axle. So these in the front here, I would rate them about 80 percent. These in the back are probably about 85 percent. They're 20.5 R25s. There's no leaks on them. There's no uh, cuts on them, I should say. The hydraulics are strong on this machine. There's no cracks or wells anywhere in this work equipment. No cracks or wells.
all of these pins and bushings are good and tight. There's no deflection or any kind of problem in this kingpin area. You got these two kingpins for the articulation joint. Those are good and tight. Um, this cutting edge is 100%. I don't think it's ever been turned. Again, this loader bucket width is eight foot four inches. It's four foot two inches tall. It's three foot seven inches deep. I didn't see a rating on the uh, on the uh, bucket itself, but I would I would rate this to be about a two and three quarter yard bucket. Uh, the hinge pin height right here, if you were loading into a dumpster, say, is twelve foot. The breakout force on this machine is an impressive 32,597 pounds. Now the static tip load of this machine, static tip load is defined as, um, it's the amount that a machine can lift. The hydraulics on this machine are so strong that uh, it'll lift, and most machines these days, they'll lift more than they can, uh, the, the ass end of the machine will come up before the hydraulics give out. So the static tip load on this machine is uh, 19,500 pounds. And that simply stated is that from this fulcrum back, um, that's, that front end, that ass end of the loader will come up if, uh, so, it's, a, it's pretty impressive, 19,996 pounds to be exact. Um, this coupler works good, no problem. We have these sets of, this set of forks over here. Like I say, we're gonna run this loader here in a little bit. These fork tines right here, they're six foot, uh, four inches. And right here at the heel, they're like four and three quarters inches thick. I'm sorry, three inches thick. Three inches thick. The carriage width is eight foot two inches tall, and the height of that of the carriage is four foot six inches and these forks are seven inches wide three inches thick seven inches wide so uh we're gonna run it in the next clip perf you got anything else you want to say uh nothing other than it's a good machine good loader it's a good loader GCB. we're gonna run it in the next clip This is a smaller setup. I'll include a video later on.
How many hours are on it? Okay, so a lot of times people will ask me about the interchangeability of a JRV coupling system. Like here we have forks and a bucket, you can get sweepers, you can get all kinds of attachments with JRV. Now the answer to that question is usually yes and no. Now it depends on the size of the machine. In this case here, we've got a, this Kawasaki here weighs about 29,000 pounds, okay? This is a coupler and a bucket for that Kawasaki. This right here is for a John Deere 544K, which also weighs about 28, 29,000 pounds. That fork set, is, that fork set right there, is for that JCB 436, which weighs about 35 to 37,000 pounds, depending on how you have it equipped. So the point that I'm trying to make here, and I'm going to make this video for illustrative purposes, is that from the coupler face forward. What you want to measure is the distance between these ear groupings here. And I'm going to show you how they're interchangeable. Like I say, this is a completely, this is for a 544K and this is for a 70. bucket to that load. We've also got a set of forks for it some here, somewhere. So if you look right here, the ear grouping is at roughly 28 inches. Now, if you look right there, see that, 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 that is going to line up right there. Here again, from the coupler face forward, JRB is pretty consistent, but from the coupler face back, they're not interchangeable. It's according to make and model. So the point that I'm trying to make here is that if you measure this right here, you've got 28 inches. So even though these are from completely different makes and different models, this would be like a WA200, a WA250, a WA270 Komatsu, um, you know, a John Deere 544, a 524. That's like a Kawasaki 60Z or a 70Z. The point that I'm trying to make is that the weight class of the loader, you can, you can interchange the attachments from JCB. You can't interchange the couplers themselves, but the attachments you can interchange. So, we're gonna show you all this here. This is 36 inches, so it's not gonna line up because this is a different weight class machine. So just for illustrative purposes, we know it's not gonna work. can see these are your grab points here for those hooks it's not gonna work so the point that I'm trying to make is that when when you buy a JRB coupling system which is also Pemberton JRB bought Pemberton now they're the best coupler out there there's no better coupler uh, Caterpillar brags about theirs John Deere Volvo uh, Hitachi, JCB, all of the major manufacturers usually go with a JRB coupling system because they're the best out there. So the point that I'm trying to make is that attachments for this bucket or for this coupler, as long as you're measuring between these air groupings right here, are typically okay. Now you want to take some other measurements just to be sure, but I'm, I'm telling you just as a general rule of thumb, they're typically okay. 
I don't want to get in trouble for saying that and somebody comes up with some kind of fluke where it doesn't work. But most of the time, if you measure, just take that quick measurement right there and you've got a JRB quick coupling system, you can probably interchange various attachments. Have a good day.